Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons, and I claim that which is owed. And I got your taxes swinging. <laughs> and this is... <laughs> The Silver Linings <laughs> playlist and uh zero one zero one zero zero one one zero one one zero one zero one zero one one zero 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 one zero zero one 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 zero zero one one zero one one zero 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 one one zero one 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 zero zero one zero zero one one zero one zero zero one zero one zero 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 one zero zero one one zero zero one one what yeah what was that that was binary for a uh, subscribe. So I'm asking you listeners, please subscribe to the show. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, it's going to be a great episode. It's going to be a great one. <laughs> yeah, we're already slap happy. Mm-hmm. We've, we've survived. There will be blood. And now we're talking about a movie that, you know what? Just as good. J- equally as good. I don't know why this was <laughs> on the IMDb top 250 as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're milkshake drunk. Uh-huh. We're oil drunk. And now now we're talking about Wishmaster. We're full of wishes. Full. Of, there's an ocean of wishes beneath our feet. <laughs> uh, man. Okay. So this is also my pick this I, week. I've abandoned my ruby. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I thought what would be good to do right after there will be blood. I know <laughs> this movie that I've watched for the first time in 2022 yeah. and had a such a blast. And I think I think I had another movie on the schedule. And I'm like, nah, we got to talk about Wishman. You did, <laughs> yes. You had. I think you had another prestige picture on the schedule. I think I did. <laughs> I think I did. Yeah, I gotta say. So I started watching this. Uh, so we we started talking about Wishmaster a few months ago, right? Mm-hmm. Like randomly, uh, you texted. You're like, I'm, have you seen Wishmaster? I'm watching it for the first time. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I saw it years ago. I realized mm-hmm. upon, by the way, buying the Blu-ray set that I, that I, I convinced you you had to. Buy <laughs> you did, and I'm. Uh, you know what? Sound investment. Uh-huh. I realized watching it, I've never seen the first one all the way through. Oh, okay. I had seen parts of it. I'd seen like a couple of scenes of the second one. Mm-hmm. I'd seen the third one all the way through, Oof. and I had never seen the fourth one before <laughs> until like a month ago. So they're so they're such odd films because films. Yeah, I, I say that with a capital F. By the way, let me, <laughs> hold, let me let me adjust my bow tie real quick. Um, they're such interesting films because like. The, the first one feels like a actual movie to an extent. No, it doesn't. To an extent, I meant like there's a beginning, middle, and end. There's oh, okay. a clear tone that they're establishing. It's not sure. It's not good. Sure. I'm not saying it's a good movie, but like no, it, but it feels right at home with like the full moon features uh-huh, kind of set and uh-huh. like this was such a golden age. I mean, I guess we still live in a golden age of direct-to-video horror movies, but like they were. It, it's so harder to separate the wheat from the chaff now. Like mm-hmm. like in the in the era when Wishmaster was coming out. We had all this kind of stuff, right? Like, like we had the well, Pinocchio movies, screen. and yeah, so and, you had to do all this kind of stuff, yeah, and Leprechaun and Jack Frost, yeah. all this stuff. But you go on Tubi now, and you're like, what is what is an actual like fun movie, and what's something that someone shot? on their you know camcorder yep. yesterday yep and it's so it's so much harder to like narrow it down mm-hmm. but these always fascinated me because they had good old Wes Craven's name front and center man he'll just put his name on anything huh he would I guess <laughs> yeah I mean uh, he did he executive produced it and I think that that had to be something right oh, Where, like, yeah. the the company was like well we gotta put your name up top please yeah yeah, well, so this is my point, though. Like, they're interesting movies because this one feels like a actual movie. Uh-huh. And then the second one, for all its goods and bads, it kind of follows the same idea. Uh-huh. The third one is, like, a sci-fi original, <laughs> like, the guy who created Hercules oh, yeah. with Kevin Sorbo was like, let me do one of these movies. And also... Let's do like a Skinamax level like porn yes. in the middle of it. Lots of boobs, lots of yeah, lots of sex scenes, and it goes even further with the fourth one. I was gonna say in the fourth one, which you have now seen, uh-huh. is uh, huh? Like I don't, I don't know a romance. It's Red Shoe Diaries with a gin. Yeah, it's a romantic comedy slash horror movie. Uh-huh. Like, and here's the thing: I recommend all of them uh-huh. because yeah. they they're all bad, but they all are a fun time. That's that third one, you get a group watch. It's a uh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, it's like an hour into the movie when suddenly an angel is in it. Uh-huh. Just the angel Ga- Gabriel? Was it Gabriel? Uh, uh, Michael, I think. Michael. The archangel. Yeah. Man, he's got a sword that can kill 
Dem- Jens. The magic sword. Yeah. There's also this thing that like, so the first two movies uh, are ver- also very much like, especially this one, let's show off all of our special effects, right? Yep. Like yep. Robert Kurtzman, I mean, special effects, right? Yep. Like effects greats, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Directs this movie and it really does feel like each scene is sort of like, Okay, well, here's the gin going and having a, a whatever forgettable conversation with somebody just so we can roll into the next uh, weird effect. Mm-hmm. There's no reason for him to go to this like mall nope. other than to turn a lady into a mannequin. There's mm-hmm. no reason for him to go to a drugstore mm-hmm. other than to kill Reggie Bannister. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that there's so many connections with Phantasm in this movie. Oh, I mean, the 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 opening credit scroll, I, I guess I'm jumping ahead, but blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah, like, I just, I, it was one wild credit after another. We're getting Angus Scrim, mm-hmm. Tony Todd, Kane Hodder, Fr- Robert England, Ted Raimi, and then most of these people have one line of dialogue or barely on on screen. Yep, a score by Harry Manfredini, uh-huh. who wrote the music for Friday the Thirteenth. Uh huh. You've got Freddy Krueger, you've got Jason Voorhees, and you've got the Candy Man all in the same movie. Yes, it's it's nuts. Yeah, and uh, Ted Raimi and um, George Buck Flower, uh-huh. like a, a classic character actor from a, a zillion John Carpenter movies. Colonel Rhodes from Day of the Dead. Oh right, he's the he's the drunk foreman. Yeah. Right? Yep. That's wild. He's, he's a drunk guy. Yeah, it's not. This movie is, uh, it's a lot for a little. Sure. Like, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, I don't know. I, I remember I watched this movie and I was like, this is, this is wild. Like, this is a lot. And it does feel like Robert Kurtzman, like, calling up his friends, right? Like, yeah. hey, guys, you can, you, you want to be in my movie? And, and, you know, he'd worked on all of these. Mm-hmm. He worked on, uh, he, I mean, he does, like, the creature effects and Dream Warriors. So, mm-hmm. like, that insane, uh, Freddy Worm and the Freddy, uh, marionette puppet that's him yep. like yep. <laughs> so cool he did the effects for or a k and b did the effects for like bride of reanimator and, yeah which is the best part of that movie uh <laughs> sure <laughs> i uh I, I i i have some thoughts on the reanimator movies but that's for another day yeah we'll get into those someday yeah eventually we'll get in there uh, so we should mention Mally is unfortunately not here. Uh, I think he wished his way out of the show, <laughs> but um, we're, we're wishing him well. He's he's not feeling well. He's under the weather. So yeah. Oh no! I just wished him well. Oh no! Oh no! I Jen, I'm sorry. <laughs> take what is owed. No. <laughs> So yeah, Wishmaster, it's if you've never seen it, uh the best way I could describe it is take a movie that is now post Scream, yeah. where everything has to be kind of cutesy. Self-referential and silly and mm-hmm. yeah. Remove the smart dialogue. Remove the smart stuff, put in a what's her name? Um uh Olsen from It's Always Sunny. Oh my gosh, I wrote down right? she is <laughs> she looks like the lead actress in this movie looks like if Sweet D played Skylar White. I, I was it's like if Sweet D didn't have a problem. Like, that's what <laughs> sure. That's what I wrote sure. down. But t- take her and put her in a movie with an evil genie. Sure. And the antics that you could imagine in the 90s that you get up to, you get up to. Ima- if, but okay. forget Barbara Eden, mm-hmm. forget Robin Williams, as we are told yep, <laughs> later yep. in this movie. And and I would also say, picture in your mind a horror movie from the 90s. Uh-huh. Think, of, think about the music that they play. You got it. That's it. That's the kind of music oh, they play man. in this movie. <laughs> this was like a Halloween 6 level soundtrack oof, of oof. just like butt rock. Except... The end credit song. We get a I, fucking Motorhead song okay. over the credits. I didn't realize it was Motorhead at first. Really? Oh my gosh. Okay, so... When it started playing, because it's like an acoustic guitar with uh-huh. an electric guitar, and I was like, "What is this Hootie the Blowfish fucking?" Yes. And then Lenny starts singing, and I was like, "This sounds like if Motorhead Len- Lenny from Motorhead played with Hootie and the Blowfish." And then the credits, I see it is a Motorhead song. You're so <laughs> right. You're so right. Absolutely. I kind of, my jaw hit the floor. I was like, "No fucking way!" <laughs> because every other song is like you know dog fart, and yeah, like that's like the, the most name butt of the rock band. fucking college music like of this time. Stink fist. It's all garbage. It's all right in the garbage, but. But it's the reason I picked this movie is uh-huh. because it is so the logic makes no sense with some of these wishes. The gin is just making rules up as he goes along, oh my which gosh. of course you expect yes. with a movie like this. But it's just also like there's so much happening. It's it's kind of wild. That was the thing is by the end of the movie, I was like, how do we know what the right thing to do here is? Because uh-huh. he tells us alternately that he can't do anything to hurt someone unless they make a wish. Uh-huh. And then he's just reanimating uh, statues to attack people. He kills the police officer for no reason. Like... 
there it, are there are moments in this movie where someone will make a wish and he's just like well you didn't word it correctly and i'm yeah. like well you just made up a, a consequence like yeah. that doesn't make any sense it's also like he puts the idea he, it's like inception he implants uh-huh. the idea of a wish in these people's heads that wouldn't it yeah it's not a wish if you're like wouldn't you like me to do this yeah it's like oh the guy with the eyes in the movie he's like would you do you wish you didn't see this right now yeah i do okay well let me take your fucking eye. well and that's the thing is like sometimes he's like well, you have to say i wish and uh-huh. then other times he's like they, they just say like uh-huh, uh-huh and then he does it that's what there's that, one that point guy, in the that movie says uh-huh yeah there's one point in the movie where he goes be careful what you wish for and i said but they didn't yeah <laughs> they didn't wish for yeah. this yeah it's it's the logic makes no sense but no. i thought that would be why it'd be fun to discuss because absolutely i took more notes for this movie than i did there will be blood <laughs> i took the so. exact same amount <laughs> so all right well without okay so, so let me ask you this yeah when was the first time you saw this movie um i remember seeing part of it on i th- want to say hbo back in the day like mm-hmm. this was a bit or hbo or showtime it was on heavy rotation sure but yeah i i barely remembered anything about it other than I remembered the opening sequence because it's balls to the wall crazy. Yep. And I remember Robert England being in it. Mm-hmm. That was about it. Okay. So like, I felt like I was watching this for the first time this time. Oh, that's, that's fun. So you, you, that's why you had so many notes then. I'm uh-huh. sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I put this on because I, one of my favorite podcasts was listening, like they, they've done a couple of the movies mm-hmm. and I'm like, these sound fucking wild. Yeah. I'm like, I got to see it. And it, they don't disappoint. Like they're bad movies, but they are so much fun. Uh-huh. Like they're a lot of fun. And there's only four of them, so you can kind of breeze through them. I did them all in like two days. Yeah. So and none of them crack a hundred minutes either. No, <laughs> like, I know. They're barely movies. Andrew Divoff as the gin is so good. He's great. Doing the most. He recognizes the movie he's in, but he's like, fuck it, I'm gonna give this performance 110%. And a, a bunch of my friends have met him at horror cons mm-hmm. and say that he's like the fucking real deal. Like he's so he's like a total sweetheart I who's bet. just is super excited to meet people. And, I bet. And do he he'll do voices. Yeah. Like- <laughs> and, and and not to to shit on the guy that takes over for the third and fourth movie, but uh-huh. he plays like a Power Rangers villain. He does. Like it's it's very theatrical and like I don't know. I, I didn't like it. But those movies are, I think I will force Mally to do one of them at some point because <laughs> I will have to drag him kicking and screaming to do those movies. We gotta do four at some point. We gotta do, we gotta do. <laughs> Although you were talking about doing two and getting Brandy and Jen back because there is a specifically insane uh-huh. death in that movie. Can I guess which word it is? Yeah. Actually, I don't want to spoil it, but no. I'll say it. Does it take place in a prison? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> it sure <laughs> it as hell does. I, boy, yeah. But I did promise that we did, I'd put them on a good movie. So maybe that's a, there's a buffer. Okay, fair enough. In between there. <laughs> we put them on Citizen Kane and then we're like, no, also we're going to do Wishmaster 2. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we get them to watch half of Citizen Kane uh-huh. and all of Wishmaster 2. Oh, that's what we do. No, like I'll splice the files together. Like the first 10 minutes, they're Citizen Kane, but then Wishmaster 2 <laughs> kicks in. And they're like, I don't remember this big in this movie. Don't you wish you knew what the sled was <laughs> don't you wish what rosebud meant <laughs> <laughs> charles foster kane don't you wish you had the best newspaper in town <laughs> actually now i kind of want this movie i want citizen kane but with a gin i want to put the gin in uh, it's a wonderful life oh. so you don't you wish you were never born <laughs> A gin and there will be blood. Like, Daniel, don't you wish there was more oil under your feet? <laughs> God. All right. Well, uh, without further ado, if for those who aren't uh, initiated by the wish master and the stranglehold it has over us, of course. let us uh, t- dive into all the details surrounding the movie. So, the year is 1997. The director, as we mentioned, is Robert Kurtzman. The movie stars Tammy Lauren, Andrew Divoff, Kane Hodder, Tony Todd, and Robert England. Wow. Not mentioned here, uh, Sam, uh, not Sam Raimi, his brother, Ted Raimi. Ted. The budget had $5 million to its name. Mm-hmm. It managed to grow $16 million worldwide. Oh, right, because this is the one that came out in theaters, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it currently has a 25% on Rotten Tomatoes. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. I would probably put a little higher, like uh-huh. in the third, low thirties. Just but- out of curiosity, what was uh, under the cherry moon? At again? <laughs> you know, that's a good point. Let's let's find out. Let's do a little. Di- that's my litmus test. Let's do a little a little dive right. Well, it's got to be better than the three hundred sixty five days by default, right? Like, oh yeah, zero percent. You can only go up from zero. <laughs> under the cherry moon, thirty six percent on Oof. Rotten Tomatoes. Better than Wishmaster. Technically better than Wishmaster. I think I might disagree. Prince. I think I might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
you were able to follow this plot? Absolutely. Uh, as loose as it is. But <laughs> I'll also say, uh, I forgot to mention, for those who've never tuned into the show, oh, yeah. what a whiplash you must be dealing with right now. Uh, our goal of the show is, uh, unlike other movie podcasts where we just discuss the movie and that's the end of it, uh-huh. we look at movies that have downer, bummer, uh, not so happily ever after endings, right. and we try to find the good in those things, hence the name of the show. So, yeah, we're different. Uh-huh. <laughs> Get over it. You want to fight about it? <laughs> but yeah, let's uh, before we get into the movie proper let's watch the trailer which i have never seen me neither i'm very excited white flashes galore i'm sure sure uh we're gonna uh, don lafontaine uh narration probably i'm gonna guess i'm gonna guess some copy that some play some joke on wishing oh sure be careful what you wish for exactly uh, we wish to see you in theaters December 23rd or whatever the fucking <laughs> this is a you'll, Christmas movie. <laughs> you'll wish to yourself it's only a movie. There, or, you, there you go. You'll wish uh, you were never... Well, I can't say that. Fuck Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Aladdin. Fuck Robin Williams. This is Wishmaster. <laughs> Alright. Well, here we go. Live entertainment. Wow, Ted Raimi's dead in the first three seconds of the trailer. Uh huh. <laughs> For centuries, there he is, Don LaFontaine, in an uncut gym. Waiting. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Put a Darth Vader effect over her breathing. Uh huh. He is coming. He, he is coming. Secrets. He sees your private dreams. Who was that? I don't know. That's a. I wrote that down. There's a weird scene where everyone watches him walk by. Man, how about a million dollars? So not to be rude to Andrew Divoff, who is fantastic, mm-hmm. but everyone in this movie acts like he's the most fuckable man on the planet. I know. Everyone, that woman especially. Uh-huh. Is- and Shannon. She's like, I can't leave this part. Also, did you notice he has like Bowie eyes? Mm-hmm. He has like a blue and a green eye. Oh, she becomes January Jones from X-Men First Class right, right there. Was it worth it? Uh, they're really saving the uh, makeup effects for the gym. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a skeleton device. coming out of some skin and then an explosion. What a great <laughs> what a great transition. But whatever you do, ready to play? Don't make a wish. Don't make a uh, wish. How, how do we not guess that? Whatever you do, don't make a wish. Because that's not a saying. <laughs> that's not a saying, you're right. Ours is better. <laughs> Fuck Aladdin. Wow, what a what a what a trailer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything we need to get out of the way before we discuss Wishmaster? <laughs> no, because I got to just jump right into saying okay. my first note is the hubris uh-huh. of going period here. Uh huh. <laughs> like we start with like this fucking uh, Arabian Nights slash Ren Fair stuff mm-hmm. and Angus Scrim, uh, the tall man himself, telling us that God made the djinn. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, did he also <laughs> make these rules? Yep. <laughs> what are we doing? Absolutely. And yeah, just the, the balls to not have one but two party scenes in this movie. Oh, sure. And yeah. I also just recently watched Hellraiser 3 for the first time. And that also has a party scene oh, where. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot. And then Wishmaster 2 does this mm-hmm. with the casino. It's a lot of party scenes just watching people just get mutilated in different ways. And Leprechaun 3. Oh, how about that? <laughs> and there we be blood. In the, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you'll forget this movie starts in ancient Persia because sure. I sure as fuck did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get a CGI establishing, sh- establishing shot straight out of Mortal Kombat Conquest uh-huh. at the beginning of this. You sure do. <laughs> and we hear the Sultan saying, show me wonders. And then... <laughs> show me what you've got. <laughs> <laughs> what you'll really want. <laughs> and then we just see a bunch of fucked up shit, and it's great. Yes. These effects are so good. We get a lady who's a tree. We get a guy who gets merged with a wall. Uh, there's a chest burster. I mean, the, there's a chest burster gnawing on another woman's arm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the <laughs> aforementioned guy who lays down and his skeleton explodes Dude. from his body. Dude. <laughs> The skeleton arising from this guy's flesh. And yes. going, ah! It's Army of Darkness as hell, <laughs> just like cranked up a notch. And then, and then like him, like there's a person like peeking around a corner and the skeleton puts his arm on his shoulder and he's like, ah! <laughs> ah. There's a snake man. It's so fun. A good animated skeleton. Yeah. I love it. It's really good. And the acting is Disney stunt show level. Yep. Like we're seeing Sinbad, the voyage of Sinbad at mm-hmm. Walt Disney World. <laughs> and like, like we mentioned up top, but the guy playing the gin, Andrew Divoff, is honestly so fucking good. He makes this movie worth it. Like the third and fourth movies are so batshit stupid, but 
they would be so much better with Andrew Divoff in those roles. But yes, like he's so fun. He he gets it. He gets this role. This is his, you know, Jason Voorhees. This is his, Fred, his Freddy Krueger. He is making it his own and he's succeeding. He's having a blast. And he's like this in everything. Like mm-hmm. this dude pops up all over the place. He's in episodes of like Highlander mm-hmm. and like every other, uh, you, you know, syndicated show from the 90s. He's, he's in a, at least a couple episodes of. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's in Air Force One. I mean, like everything he pops up and he's he's giving it his all yeah so we should mention uh this movie starts with a, a i guess a, a persian king or prince uh making these wishes he wishes that he had a party that would be remembered forever uh-huh. and then of course oh, it'll be remembered all right because yeah. everything will go fucking awful <laughs> or as the gin tells us these are new splendors yep, yep the king's right hand man uh or the pharaoh i guess it would be right in persia or is that only egypt uh i have I, no idea i don't know okay. i i think it's the sultan but i'm not 100 percent sure if that's the correct i think they actually say it at some point we'll go with the big cheese here he says you, you know his, his right hand man yeah sends the gin back by reciting this phrase over and over with the jewel in his hand the shah yeah and then uh we cut to present day yeah uh, so what are we to what are we to understand about when the gin makes the walls all wavy. Oh, is that oh, uh, cuz the later movies establish that he's trying to bring his entire race over. I, I this I don't know. But this movie it seems like he's just like look, look at the walls, isn't that crazy? He's like, look at this midsummer effect I just did. Right. <laughs> it's it's like it's, when it's like when Freddy pulls open his shirt and he's like, look, here's all the faces of the people I killed. Yeah. And it's like, well, what are we to what are we to take from this? What, what, what are, why are you showing me this? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Put that back. We cut to present day, and Robert England is this uh, art collector. He likes collecting ancient uh, artifacts, statues, and whatnot. Yeah, he's got one coming in on a ship. Uh huh. And then yeah, uh, Joseph Plato, uh, Colonel Rhodes from Day of the Dead, not even trying to cover up the fact that he's drinking on the job. Uh-huh. He's got a cigar in his mouth. He's pouring booze from a flask into his styrofoam cup. He's working the docks, working the crane. Uh-huh. Ted Raimi is. Uh, uh, Robert England's right hand, like his assistant, they're lowering this uh, this statue down. Yes, the guy uh, spills his alcohol, slips and spills alcohol on the controls. It drops the box and crushes Ted Raimi. Yeah, like like an accordion. Like he folds up like the kid from Final Destination Two. It's pretty good. <laughs> he sure does. Yeah, yeah. And Ted Raimi gets two lines of dialogue, and then Ed Finney is smushed. Mm-hmm. And so the statue breaks open. There's a jewel inside. Uh oh. We kind of cut, but the implication is one of the dock workers takes that jewel, yes. sells it to a guy at a pawn shop. The guy at the pawn shop brings it to an appraiser, uh-huh. and that's where we uh, cut to- There's so many working, like moving parts here. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I could not, for the life of me, I was so confused by the pawn shop scene, or, or the uh, the scene where he goes to the appraiser, mm-hmm. and then like the relationship, like there's no scene that really establishes that our protagonist- knows the other people until they're all just having conversations together. Yep. And so for like for a minute, I even forgot that her sister is in this first scene. Like Shannon is the girl on the phone. I <laughs> like, know. I forgot too. I forgot that we're even sisters right. until uh the scene where she talks about it. Yeah. And she does that thing. <laughs> and the gin goes like your tasty sister. And yeah. I was like, oh yeah, they are related. Ugh. Ugh. So yeah, we, what we cut to the most jarring college fart rock uh, that <laughs> firmly plants this movie in the late 90s. Yeah, this Daphne Loves Derby song playing in this uh, scene. <laughs> uh, th- th- these two people playing tennis. Yeah. And man, I, I got to say, and maybe you'll agree with me with this too. Ladies, if you have a guy friend that you've been if you- friends, if you, if you have a guy friend that you've been friends with for years, uh-huh. and he tells you <laughs> that he wants to take you on a date, uh-huh. he can no longer go back to being just a friend. <laughs> like if you tell him, no, this is the one I, I have. We have a good thing going. I don't want you. I don't want to ruin it. Uh-huh. That guy's not going to be like okay, and then go right back to the casual platonic friendship you have i don't think that's possible <laughs> right well uh i well listen man uh, oh, i, oh I boy, don't know oh boy <laughs> i don't know i i played the long game and okay. so I, <laughs> i'm dating my best friend now so like, oh well <laughs> okay okay but that's but a- i'm not like, i'm not saying i'm the exception of the rule though no no no. If, the if difference she, is she said yes yes exactly. exactly she wasn't just like uh i didn't say we should go out and she wasn't like 
uh we go out all the time yeah. like <laughs> she's not playing stupid we get a hot dog and go to a ball game <laughs> like this douche says he puts his sweaty hat oh on my god her head. I, threw, I almost threw up i almost i, I noticed it too oh. that's the most high school flirty thing you can do right like Whoa. guys guys would put their hat on their head girls would wear your sweater and it's yeah. just like isn't this funny i took your jacket we should date that's the thing they oh you told ashley we should get a date right we, <laughs> yeah but we get a date <laughs> we get a date but uh, that's that's the weird part about this movie they want to play it like this 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 <laughs> good callback <laughs> this actress is like oblivious no not even that like they, they, like she's in like early college like she's a freshman in college or something like they're I, trying to- I can't i couldn't figure that out either right like alexandra seems to be a career woman yep because he also has been working in working in the lab late one night this is wild this is wild okay so they play it like they're in like freshmen in college they're playing this tennis game and most of the movie takes place around the the college of technology and medicine right but then she's the best jewel appraiser at this company right. and he's a fucking lab technician yeah he's using lasers to look at crystals what the fuck you it's like they wanted to have it both ways they uh-huh. want this like high school scream level i was trying to figure this out too for like the first half of the movie and then i said i fuck could it. not i could not and i think it is i think it is literally they wrote a draft where it's a high school movie uh-huh then then changed it to be more mature but didn't change enough of it they yep. just did some control replace with their yep. jobs yep but yeah, like so they're playing tennis. They have this conversation, and then yeah, like you said, he puts his sweaty hat on her fucking head. Gross. Alexandra and Nick made for each other. Ugh. He says he's casting a spell on her. Oh wait, no, no, his name's not Nick. His name is Josh. Oh, Josh, right? Nick is the uh, the 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 head of the appraisal company. Yes. yes, because later on, I wrote down when she's screaming. I'm like, Josh is the worst name to scream. Josh, Josh, Josh. right? Like it's it's not it's not good. It's not good. But yeah, she's she's just like, look, I don't want things to change. I just want to stay friends with you. And he's like, okay, okay. And he like smiles, gets in his car, and blasts some Seven Mary Three sounding Ugh. shit as he goes to the lab. It's the worst. It's the worst music. And then hard cut to this appraiser's office. This yes. guy walks in. And it's almost like a scene from the room, like the way they play this blocking in this direction. Oh my gosh. But yeah. This, this guy, the bond shop owner brings this jewel in and uh, he's like, I want to see how much this costs. And then the the boss at this place mm-hmm. has this lime green sweater on. It looks like he's a Guido Shaggy. <laughs> like I, this guy. Yeah, this is Chris Lemon, Jack Lemon's son, which blew my mind. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm not kidding at all. And I, it, you and know what's crazy? What's that? I just remembered what we replaced Wishmaster from. Like, what, what was it? We were going to talk about the China Syndrome with Jack Lemon. Holy <laughs> shit! You really downgraded. I really did. I did not realize that was his son. You fully, you fully did. Oh my god, uh, that's so funny. Oh. No, Nick and Nick. The thing that is puzzling to me about Nick mm-hmm. is that he runs his hairline. This, well, yes, <laughs> uh, there's so many things about the way he's put together. He looks like uh, he looks like a Joe Trulio character, <laughs> but he like he. There's a couple of times in this movie where I I don't understand how he's in charge nope. because he acts like. He's never seen a gym before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like at one point, she's like, "I need to run some tests on it," and he's like, "Like a physical? Yeah, give it. You want to turn this little jewel balls and cough? What are you talking yeah. about?" Yeah, <laughs> and he's uh, there's constant Nick jump scares. There's yep. so many scenes in this movie where a character just casually sidles up, and we're supposed to be scared. Uh huh. There's a couple of those. Yeah, like at the when the when they're practicing for the play later on too. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's the the craziest one. So I don't understand this either because this guy brings this jewel in. Uh huh. He's like, "I want to know." how much money i can get for it and she's like okay i'll write you up a receipt i'm like wait what yeah he, he wanted he wanted it appraise he didn't want to sell it what the fuck are you talking about yeah it's not rick harrison you're not gonna call one of your guys uh-huh. In. <laughs> uh-huh this is also the part i didn't understand too so she's the best jewel appraiser at this company but uh-huh. she's also a girl's basketball coach I, and well that but i was also like how long is this day yeah so she's she assuming this takes place the same day the guy brings it in to get appraised. She goes and plays tennis with Josh. Uh-huh. Then she goes to work. Uh-huh. Then she studies the diamond for a little bit. And then she's like, oh, fuck, I'm late for basketball. Her schedule must be insane. Like- I- I've mentioned this before, <laughs> but it's like uh, Mitch Buchanan on fucking Baywatch. He's like, he's like watching the beaches by day and by night. He's solving crimes. Uh-huh. 
It's her, she's got to be exhausted. No wonder she doesn't want to go on a date. When does she sleep? I know. Yeah. She wishes she could get a, a few ounces of sleep. Huh? She <laughs> winked by <laughs> Heyo, and she's also she's also giving a speech about tuning out everybody. Yeah, about stillness. And I was like, what is this movie? Stillness. What is what? I don't understand what that has to do with anything else. Right. Like, la- later on, I think it's implied like she has to like calm down before she can plan. I'm like, that's the moral of the story, right? <laughs> well, and you know, like there's always that thing where like the best basketball players are the ones who just stop moving yeah, on the court. That's the best think analogy about you could have for basketball. Just don't move. <laughs> I got to think about every game I, before I play. <laughs> Oh, she's there's just one girl on the team, but like in the uh, hallway from the locker rooms, just staring at <laughs> just the wall, stare, just staring at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> but so she takes the she takes the gym, the fire opal, yeah, over to Josh, and Josh is like, "Okay, I'll take a look at it if you want to go out with me." And she doesn't answer him. If you want to get a date? If you want to get a date? Oh, <laughs> so she leaves. I, and, I forgot this movie takes place at the Bronx, <laughs> right? And she says to herself, or he says to himself, "This is the easiest date you've ever gotten, Aikman." What? And again, I'm like, she mean? didn't say yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, so many times in this movie, someone just kind of accepts that they've gotten an answer when it hasn't happened. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so he he fires some lasers at this gym, which I don't know if that's what you do. My favorite part is like when I know movies like this, when someone is doing some kind of test with a computer. Yes. And like you see the gym and like the software is running, but he's also typing and nothing's happening. Like right. it's just like click and clack, click and clack, click and clack, but nothing's happening. It's like Dark Man yeah. like building his mask. Yeah. <laughs> like, but like nothing's happening. Well, something does happen oh. because the laser wakes up the gym. What a weird, what a weird thing to do, right? We see a POV inside the crystal. And Josh is yelling one of my favorite lines I've heard in a movie recently. End the laser scan, damn it. Yep. <laughs> and and the inside of the gym uh-huh. is it's like the party city version of the inside of Jean Jacket from Nope. Like it's <laughs> it's so like the walls are clearly just like they took a they took like some a tablecloth poked some holes in it and yeah. shined a red light bulb through it. Like it's very, oh, very man. strange. It's very eighties Doctor Who. Uh-huh. Like it is, uh, or or yeah, yeah. Th- that's that's. Oh man, you you nailed it with the jean jacket. Thing. And there's so much fog on the ground, and when the jewel explodes, the fog escapes. And is, like this lab, there's fog all over the ground for some reason. Oh my god, yeah. So the jewel explodes. Embeds itself in like Josh's face. He's like bleeding out. It's so funny. And we get none other than Vern Troyer uh-huh. as the little version of the gym. Uh huh. But one thing I'll say before we talk about this scene. Uh huh. When when it do- like she decides that she's gonna call Josh because she felt a presence. Oh, so she sure. gets on the phone and it cuts to this lab and the phone's ringing and it's like the place is on fire and everything. I so badly wanted just like an answer machine to be hanging by a cable and just hear the voice. Hi, you've reached April O'Neil. Oh, <laughs> sure. You can't, sure. You can't reach me right now. Sorry, April, you're fired. <laughs> I gotta rewatch that movie. I know this comes as a blow. It's so good. <laughs> it's such a good movie. I I tried to find a way to make it work for this show, but uh-huh. it, it just doesn't. And, and so th- the little Jen, <laughs> little Jen, my rap name. So th- this movie seems to establish this idea that the Jen is getting stronger each time he yeah. grants a wish, but that only happens twice. Yeah, I did. I, I don't know. It's, they're trying to do a lot, uh-huh. but not making a cohesive thread with all of it. Like, it also is kind of incredible that he looks like Cell, like yes. <laughs> little Cell from Dragon Ball Z in this scene. Yes, he does. God, yes, he does. He so fucking does. He ca- then he he grants that first wish and turns into Piccolo for a scene. <laughs> so okay, so we got to talk about this first wish. But before we do that, uh-huh. I want to talk about this weird fever dream that oh. she starts. Like the, the editing in this scene, whenever anyone else is where she gets a like a little preview of the movie. <laughs> she gets a preview of the movie like it's opening a Mission Impossible, and then uh- like also <laughs> yeah. It's making like vinegar stroke faces as they're like laying over dissolves of <laughs> other things that are happening. It's Halloween six editing, right? It's yeah. those weird little transitions. Uh, yes. And this little gin, so he 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 comes to to Josh, who's bleeding out, and he says You want the pain to cease? Yes, I can make the pain end. And he's like, okay. And then Monkey's Paw, that's the whole Jin's fucking deal. Is- and then the Jin just starts wiggling. Yeah, he starts. He's, he gets the same little uh, piss strokes that Michael gets in <laughs> Halloween, uh, Halloween Ends. Yeah, but, but so his got his wish juice. He wishes. He wishes. So so Josh's wishes. I want this pain to end. And yeah. the Jin interprets that as okay. So you should die. Right. <laughs> like, right. 
if you're dead, you don't feel the pain. There you go. And then he stands up, and the gin's got no ass, man. It's no. flatter than day old soda back there. <laughs> I, I don't. It's real bad. Uh-huh. So Alex, our lead character, she she senses something's wrong. She runs to the lab. This is what I'm talking about. She starts screaming, "Josh, Josh, are you okay?" Uh-huh. And I'm like, "Josh just doesn't. The name Josh doesn't sound good when you're when you're in a panic like that." But sure. She gets there. They're already zipping him up in this body bag. Did you notice this scene at all? Like how poorly the zipper is on this body bag? I didn't. No. <laughs> it's like it like it's stuck on his hair or something. And the guy's like, <laughs> Oh like, wow, no, I missed that entirely. <laughs> it, 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 I don't think it literally gets stuck on his hair, but it just feels like it's the zipper. Is, it, it's not a smooth like. Zoop. Oh my god, it's it's real fun. <laughs> And then I wrote down this line, and I don't remember what the context of it is, but she said, oh, I do remember. Okay, so she sees the Josh's body's dead. Yeah. The police detective's there. Like, if you think of something, let me know, whatever. Uh-huh. We cut to this bum. Oh, that's just- oh before that, actually, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, when the CSI guy gets to the scene, he goes, computer malfunction must have been one hell of a computer. <laughs> it's, it's very- <laughs> I give the old man a week. Wouldn't it be better if it's that was one hell of a malfunction? Uh huh. That when that line worked better? Like, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> but we cut to this bum in like the seemingly most unrelated part of this movie. Uh huh. But this bum is walking down the street. To, he's trying to get money up from this person who walks into this pharmacy. Yeah. And then as you mentioned it, Reggie from Phantasm movies is the pharmacist. Yeah. And we and we have to say like this 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 fellow's played by George Buck Flower, who a great character actor, mm-hmm. but like. When we say when you say bum, like he, it is a cartoonish version oh, of, yeah. of an unhoused person. Like it he, is, he should have a stick with a bandana and his belongings wrapped around. It, it is truly like wacky, and he's he's just yeah, he's trying to get money from folks. He's cussing up a storm. Like he has some of the most insane dialogue I've ever heard in my life. This might be my favorite scene of the movie because it's so <laughs> unrelated to everything else. It's like this pharmacist comes out on the sidewalk and he's like, <clears throat> "Hey Don't man, tell you- me how to run." On my fucking business you can't you can't be i've been i've already told you you can't be begging for money from people coming in the store he's like well i can do whatever i want i'm on the sidewalk you don't own the sidewalk and the farmer's is like i do own the sidewalk actually i pay taxes and he goes i got your taxes hanging oh right <laughs> and he says he says i hope you die you sack of shit he calls the yeah he tells him i hope you fucking die and then the the bum says you are he calls him a discomplected afterbirth of a chinese gangbanger what a what a line like the savant level just word salad yeah <laughs> this guy is the roast master right here like it's so weird like these two fighting and then the bum walks away, and then this shit- we get the gin in the hood. This, this, this shit is so fucking wild. So the bum's walking down the, d- down the sidewalk. He's talking to himself, saying, like, oh, fuck that guy. I got your taxes hanging. Uh-huh. And then the gin, they play this shit like it's like when they put the Ninja Turtles in trench coats and uh-huh. pretend like any normal person wouldn't notice immediately that he's not human. What did they come up with his stuff? Uh-huh. Yeah. The gin's in the back alley with his hood up, like he's about to go on at uh, to a rap battle in yeah. eight miles. He's got his Jose Canseco bat. <laughs> uh huh. And he's like, "Oh, you wish that guy dead, right? What What else do you wish?" He's like, he goes, well, oh, "I don't, I don't know if I want him to die, but I'd, I'd, I'd love it if he got cancer. <laughs> I love if he got cancer." And the gin's like, <laughs> and then it cuts to this guy in the pharmacy, his skin bubbling from the inside. This. This is not what cancer looks like. This no. is anth- this is anthrax. Like I don't know. Also, did you did you catch Tom Savini? What like is the guy oh, standing over no, him? No, but he's that dying? makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. This is like. Do you think the gin just didn't know what cancer was? It's like, uh, fuck it. It's a good bubbling skin. He goes, uh, sure. Yeah, uh, that's the thing where it looks like you drank uh, acid, right? Oh, uh, you drink uh, some... Uh, I drink your acid milkshake. <laughs> that's what it looks like when you drink antifreeze. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's... It's such a weird, and then yeah, this guy's just fucking dead in the pharmacy, and then the bum sees inside what's happened, freaks the fuck out. Tries to run away. Drops a cigarette and tries to run away, and then the gin- Has a monologue at him. The guy's gone, and the gin's like, yes, run, little man, tell- Tell them something <laughs> who runs loose in their city, one which feeds on wishes. And the guy's gone, by the way. He yeah, just, and then, there's so much of that. Like the hardest motherfucker- in the city takes a drag from this cigarette that it's is the- my favorite shot in the movie <laughs> when the gin takes another like smoke and it's so good the gin smoking a cigarette is the coolest fucking thing i think i've ever seen it legitimately <laughs> is and so th- this is where a new rule gets established which is the gin can just take people's faces and just become them sure oh i mean f- right before that actually there's a 
There's the bit where Shannon argues with uh, Alexandra. Is it right here? Yes. Okay. Because she tells her like, oh, you're imagining things just like last time because they lost their parents in a fire in a bit of backstory that doesn't really matter. It's so like shoehorned in and they do the thing to establish that she like maybe went to a clinic years ago. It's so weird. They do the thing we talked about in the Invisible Man episode, which you weren't. Well, maybe you were here for, I don't know, but uh, they they try to do the thing (laughs) where they're like, yeah, sis, blah, blah, blah happened. And Uh it's like, that's the laziest way you can fucking do it. But she's like, Alex, don't feel bad. This is nothing like last time. You got me out of the fire. And so we were watching, uh, we watched Freddy, I rewatched Freddy versus Jason last night. And so much of the dialogue is is like that. But well, Ashley had never seen it before. Oh, (laughs) no. Now I think she's all set. Oh, no, Ashley. Oh, I'm so sorry. And then so like, but there's so much of that. That movie is just like, yeah, you remember what happened to your parents? Yeah. Oh, well, my brother's been gone for four years, but this is his van. Yep. Yep. (laughs) It's so weird. But I guess the story is there was a house fire. Alex managed to get her sister out sure. but not her parents right and i don't that's not really relevant at all to it only really ever comes back in a weird little the painting painting thing. that we see at the end of the movie yeah that is 100 percent of freddy krueger death yes. like that's yeah. what that is <laughs> you're stepping on freddy's territory at that point uh, but yeah the the gen goes to the college of medicine to get a body and we get that scene of everyone at the college watching him walk by mm-hmm. and there's like one dude in the background who says and i quote hey fuck (laughs) (laughs) this is something too we haven't talked about in a while Uh and i'm kind of i'm bringing it back but the gin in this movie yeah i'm gonna say he's a real scam he's a little bit of a scam yeah (laughs) you're right because he goes into this this uh this uh what do you call this like a freezer for bodies what do they call it into the morgue (laughs) the morgue well it's like they're like bodies that are being held there for student use yeah the walmart mortuary as we like to call it (laughs) that's right yeah 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 trying to get in as many callbacks as i can (laughs) yeah so he goes in there he's looking at this guy's body and then the student comes in Uh sees the gin starts freaking out and he says am i to understand and this is something you wish to not see. Yeah. And the guy goes, uh huh. Uh huh. And so Jen's like, okay, it takes this guy's fucking eyes out of his head. Yeah, not <laughs> a wish. Not a wish at all. No. Just get, if you ask somebody if they want something, that's uh-huh. not a wish. Right. A wish is you have, to, it has to be worded that way. This is what I want. Yeah. I want this thing. I wish for this thing. Yes. So. That's yeah, such a little scamp in this movie. He takes this guy's eyes and then he takes this guy's face. I kept thinking about that scene in the labyrinth, right? Mm-hmm. Like when she like does her little chant at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, and it cuts to the one goblin who's like, "That's not it. It doesn't even start with I wish." Like, yeah, that's why yep. I kept wanting so that that Muppet to show up and just be like, "This is bullshit." <laughs> labyrinth has more rules established for wishes than the wish. <laughs> a movie called Wish Master. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. So yeah, he becomes this guy. He becomes Andrew Divoff. Andrew Divoff and Andrew Divoff's first like line of business is I got to get some fucking new drip because this shit's not working. <laughs> right. He goes to the mall. There's no reason for this scene to exist. But oh, uh, well. Meanwhile, Alex is meeting with Beaumont for the first time. True. Uh, yes. With, with okay, Robert I should, England. I should have said most of my notes are about the jig. Sure. I'm like the stuff with Alex, I could not care less about. Oh, the only <laughs> thing I wanted to mention is that the that Beaumont has this monologue about how. Ahura Mazda, the 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 statue that he was going to collect, this this god. Yeah, Acura Integra. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> it was a force of good, but since the opposing side was his shadow, he was actually bad or something like that. Like Whatever. every time, every time this movie tries to create a mythology, it's laughable. It's so dumb. Like, and I think that the the, the sequels kind of recognize that because yeah. they're just like, let's just do a bunch of weird set pieces. Absolutely. And uh, get some good, fantastic cameos in there. Some good character actors. Right. Fucking Boki, Woodbine, Tiny Leaster. Like, they're all... Oh, I know. Yeah. It's so crazy. <laughs> um, and then, yes, we get the we get the jump scare at the, the rehearsal, right? Oh, like- is, that, is that here? Okay, yes, you're right. So, he, Beaumont, who's Robert England, by the way, uh-huh. tells her, look, I can't help you here, but you can go talk to this lady I know. She can maybe give you some insight on your little jewel and everything. Professor Derleth, mm-hmm. who acts like a Maria Bamford character. Oh, my God. Maria Bamford could 100% and do this yes <laughs> i was trying to put it together last night i'm like who does she remind me of and that's it that's it's, it it's lady dynamite like it's lady 100%. Dynamite. so she's like uh you know forget everything you know about G- genies forget about fuck aladdin fuck robin Williams. <laughs> she, she might as well say that she she says uh jen drew f- genie can suck my balls yeah she's like this is the problem i have with the later hellraiser movies too because she's like he's not an angel and he's not a demon right and i'm like okay that's that's somewhere in between right uh-huh. but they're always evil and they're always like but 
but we're gonna give you hell basically i'm like but that's that's demons you're right. just doing demon shit you're, sp- you're supposed to be different to but. the point where the third movie is subtitled beyond the gates of hell mm-hmm. insinuating that he is a demon uh-huh yeah they they immediately lose sight of the, the fucking lore they established uh-huh but yeah she goes there and the woman's like uh we'll talk about uh genies later i gotta get this play going <laughs> right that i'm not directing she no, says no just she's like a consultant basically like does this look good yeah all right <laughs> yeah we cut to the mall and the the gin is getting closed this woman that works there this retail worker is this guy must might, might as well be like if I, I don't know. Like if, if Brad Pitt walked in completely balls naked, uh-huh. and or who's a like Henry Cavill or anybody that's hot, sure, walking in naked. That's how she looks at this guy. Like she's like drooling yeah. at this guy. Yes, again, nothing against Andrew Divoff, but it's just kind of weird. No, that- she's like she's like. What can I suggest you try on a tighter suit? Mm-hmm. He magics cash into her shirt. This this <laughs> shit. Okay, this is not a wish either because she's he's she says cash or charge because he's buying clothes uh-huh. and he says which would you prefer? Yeah. Yeah, and then in this same scene, he does make her say, I wish. Yep. Like, that's part of the rules that she has to. Yep. The, the, the money appears in her bra, which she does not question at all. She's like, oh, that's weird. Because <laughs> yeah. she's so enamored by this dude. Yeah. And then he says, <laughs> unprompted, he says, does it bother you that your beauty will fade? And I'm like, God, dude. Out of nowhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's, she's a beautiful woman. And he was like, oh, you're going to get fucking <laughs> raggedy as shit. You're older. <laughs> Does it bum you out that you will become an uggo? <laughs> Does it bother you that you will not be a gamilf? <laughs> you're older. <laughs> gamilf. It's so fucking weird. And then. She goes, yeah, I guess. And he goes, do you wish, basically, do you wish to be beautiful forever? She goes, yeah, I do. And the response, the way he interprets that is, all right, then I'll make you a fucking mannequin, I guess. You're a mannequin now. Because you know all those hot mannequins you see all the time. Yeah. What are, <laughs> wait, hang on, what? When I think beauty, that's the first thing I think of. Well, you, you don't like mannequins? <laughs> uh, I, I, well, I've been known, I like parts of mannequins. I'll oh, say sure, that. sure. Okay. <laughs> all right. But the weird part is like, she becomes a mannequin, but she looks exactly like herself. And it's like, the implication here is none of her coworkers think, hey, this mannequin sure looks a lot like uh, Rachel, who we haven't seen in quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. No, no dots to connect there. Like, it's... It's, this is the dumbest death in the movie. This mannequin that is like silent, like sort of grunting uh-huh. and rolling its eyes around in its head. It's like it's like when they're when they're a character in a cartoon is frozen in ice, but they can still move their eyes. <laughs> <and they're laughs> rrr, rrr, rrr. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then okay, so Andrew Divoff then goes to <laughs> Detective Nathanson. The Detective Nathanson, who's the the, C- the CSI guy or whatever. Yeah, and he's like, hey, I understand you're working on this case. And you might know who the person is that found this jewel or whatever he says. Sure. He's trying to get he's trying to get the information to get to Alex, basically. Yeah. And this cop is like looking over at this other guy and he's like, You see that guy over there? I know he's fucking guilty. I just he always beats the rap. I I just wish I could catch this guy committing an actual crime. Dead to rights. And dude everyone everyone's an eyewitness. Dude, I Okay, I take it back. This this might be the best scene of the movie. It's so wild. The, it's the, over the top as fuck. The perp suddenly starts shaking like he doesn't know why he's moving. Uh-huh. He grabs a gun, shoots like eight people. Dude. He pulls a guy's jaw <laughs> off with his bare hand. <laughs> so he like he takes this cop's gun and just starts blasting. And then yeah, this everyone starts trying to tackle him. And yeah, like you said, he rips a guy's jaw off out of his fucking face as he's doing that there is a sh- there's a guy very calmly on the phone in the background uh-huh. it made me laugh so hard that uh-huh. like that guy just was like so dedicated to the shoot that he didn't even notice it's terminator one levels of police getting just railroaded yes. and then like they open fire on this guy in this police station they shoot him like 15 times uh-huh. it's like michael myers in halloween four uh-huh at the end of four yeah when he falls down the <laughs> yeah. well it's so fucking it's bo- like if this movie was just shit like this and they didn't bother with like trying to make a cohesive story it's just like let's just have some cool deaths uh-huh some, some weird some funny play on words with wishes which like, is why i think we should do two next season yeah we might <laughs> we might have to so kane hodder is the security guard at the appraisal place that alex works at yes with one of the worst beards i think i've ever seen on a human being it's <laughs> Yeah, it's so bizarrely cut. It's very odd. But and again, listeners, Kane Hodder, uh, Jason Voorhees in part seven through Jason X. Yes, he's also Leatherface in the trailer for Texas Chainsaw Three, which yep. we talked about earlier this season. Yep, we sure did. 
And so I guess this, this is the maybe also this is why I like this movie because of the funny stuff because yeah. very rarely do you see a villain like this get outsmarted but in the dumbest fucking way because oh when he says I I wish you would leave yes and <laughs> Wishmaster just the the gen starts turning around and he's like no 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 he's, his, his body's moving and he can't control it. he's like no I must I must get back in there it's a really <laughs> good physical comedy performance it really is so so he goes to the appraisal office Kane Hodges security guard he's like I need to sp- speak with Alex is she in there and he goes no the boss is in here but we're closed and the guy's like well and the gin goes well i need to get in and kate hotter goes uh no and i'd goes, like to see you come go walk through me or something like that well, well yeah he, he says uh you gotta get out of here and he goes well, the gin goes ask me something he goes okay i'm asking you to leave and then, yeah the comedy because <laughs> it's so funny it's, it's like, so funny his head stays still and his body starts to turn around he's just like no <laughs> no <laughs> And then, hey, Kane Hodder, you're in the clear here, but he goes, yeah, the only way you're getting in here is through me. That's something I'd love to see. Yeah. Again, not, a, not wish, a wish, but he turns into a like flat 2D piece of glass and the gin just walks right through him. It's such a bad effect. It's so bad. It's bad, but it's so goofy. It's really and funny. so fucking funny. Then we get my favorite wish of the movie. I think this scene is hysterical. Oh my, okay. 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 Yes. Uh, before you get there, because I know what you're talking about. Let uh-huh. me set this up. Because I know a lot of people are not going to watch this movie and just listen. <laughs> sure. so that's, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. I implore I implore you to seek it out and watch it. Though. It's on Tubi for free. There Again, you go. Tubi, the best friend of a horror fan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Tubi and Shudder. The goats. The yeah. goats. So the gin loves smoking now. For oh, sure. In sure. present day for some reason. Because he comes into the boss's office. The guy that I said looked like Guido, Guido Shaggy. Uh-huh. And he's like, he's like, how'd you get in? Oh, the I, what is, he's, he makes a pun about uh, the screen security guard let me in or something like that i can't remember but he starts smoking and he's like uh he, he turns one of the guy's uh artifacts into a pure gold and the guy's like how'd you do that like, <laughs> yeah so, it's so fucking funny and then he goes uh i need to know where alex is uh, and he's like well i can't tell you where she is and he's like well can i get, can i grant your wish or whatever it's such a sloppily nick says nick says uh, i do it for a million dollars oh yeah what would it take for you to give me the information it'd take a million dollars and then i'm gonna turn this over to you because this <laughs> shit please describe this is the wildest fucking thing so nick nick wishes for a million dollars in exchange for alexandra's address mm-hmm. and the gin says granted smash cut to an old lady <laughs> at an airport <laughs> signing <laughs> okay wait 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 wait. okay so we cut to the airport we cut to an airport and this lady is like signing like the insurance stuff for the flight uh-huh she's uh and she says uh oh the 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 clerk says uh is there you you forgot to put a dependent on yes. here and she goes oh of course my son nick you know he runs a very successful appraisal business uh-huh. she's like so proud of him uh-huh. and you see her sign on the dotted line underneath a form that says one million dollar payout one million dollar insurance policy yes the- <laughs> you know those those insurance policies we all fill out at the airport, at the airport. <laughs> cut to the plane taking off and exploding <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a weird like it's like a smash cut like a match cut where like <laughs> <laughs> it's a, like clearly they didn't film like a plane ex- they couldn't film a plane explosion no, so they just cut to like a stock explosion but just just the implication here that th- like that's the that's the wish coming true is he gets this insurance payout uh-huh. it's so fucking funny it's the funniest it's the fu- like this is you do this after the police station scene yeah. it's it's the funniest fucking movie yeah. like it's I, w- I wish, and I think they kind of get that, like you said, in the second one, but this is what it needs to be. The just- second one is way more, like, effect-driven, even mm-hmm. more than this one. And then this one is, like, like I, it's so fucked up, but it is so funny. Yes. That was the moment where I was, like, I, I legit said, like, I love this movie, like, yeah. out loud. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's so awful. So... Then we get a scene that's straight out of It Chapter 2, because Alex goes to the woman's house that we saw that was consulting the play. This uh-huh. woman that kind of looks like the Long Island medium. Yes. And 
she's the whole time the woman's like in her apartment she's like oh can i get you something to drink uh-huh. no that's fine he's it's a little too warm in here no it's fine yeah and then she keeps doing it as she's describing like the the lore of genies and gins and everything and the dialogue here is on an like on another level from the rest of the movie it's uh-huh. actually really well written but it's super flowery you know she's talking about and the gin trod the wings of angels beneath his conquering feet and mm-hmm. i'm just like this is really really good mm-hmm. Uh, but it's like like i said it's like a scene out of it chapter two because it's this old woman that's clearly not the old woman yes like and then she alex goes god damn it i don't want anything to drink i'm fine with the air conditioner why do you keep asking me if i want things and she he, she turns into andrew Diva and she's like because you you and i have unfinished business or whatever i love how he describes what happened right he's like he's like when she saw my true form she got downright hysterical uh-huh. like the way she <laughs> the way he says it is so funny and then this is I had to pull this clip because oh this is... Is this where is that tasty sister of yours? No. Okay. But this is the scene where Alex first sees the gin as its true so self. Oh, sees what he looks like. Listen. <laughs> listen, yeah. if you've never seen the movie, listen to how she reacts to seeing a fucking demon, basically. A monster in the room with her. Yes. yes. Keep in mind, this is, that's, this is the first time she's seeing him in his true form. Spare me, child. Behold my true face. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look, Troll 2, this is not. <laughs> this is. It's the most flat delivery. Like, yeah. Oh my god. Look, like, I don't mean to. I don't want to be mean, but like, <laughs> it, this is one of the least interesting, like, main characters we've had in a horror movie in a while. Yep. And then he. He basically says, I got to grant you the wish, your three wishes, yeah. so I can. Whatever. Wishes. Yeah, just make your wishes. <laughs> oh yeah, he adds he does like a Matt Berry like adds an extra syllable. Uh-huh. Wishes. Make it is like any word that's two syllables, he makes four. Like it's it's very interesting performance. But, but then, he's also getting into Freddy territory. He's like uh-huh. licking the he's licking the air. He's he has this recurring thing that I like a lot where he like taps his fingers or his claws. Like uh-huh. I don't know. It's a it's a good performance. It it's is a good performance. It is. And this is where the movie gets like fun and interesting because it's a game now. It's a cat and mouse game. And she wishes he'll die. Yeah. So this is where we get the fun parts. Like, okay, if you were in the situation, what would you do? Well, obviously you would wish this guy would <laughs> off himself, would kill himself. And he goes, okay. And he, no, he says, I'll give you a free wish right away. Right. Oh, right. Yes. And she says, fine. I wish you'd kill yourself. He goes, okay. And then he just pulls out a gun, a gun. And, <laughs> and shoots himself in the head. His head explodes. Explodes and then reforms yeah like reforms he goes if it's any consolation that hurt like hell (laughs) but like like (laughs) so good we also know she can make him leave at this point Uh uh-huh she asks what he is yeah she says i tell my girls that i coach that in order to win you have to understand your opponent right so i wish i knew what you were but also now it seems like he needs the jewel to grant wishes right like yeah he, at or, one point, well, he has the jewel right i know but he like he, he he did this thing earlier where he's like i claim that which is owed and then that brought oh right right the right the jewel yeah. brought him the souls and i don't know there's some weird stuff here but this is the one wish where i am like he fully does not grant this wish nope because she asked, I wish to know what you were. And he takes that as, oh, so you want to go inside the jewel? Okay. Let's get in the jewel. <laughs> You'll run away from a dog while I give you a monologue about how scary I am. Uh-huh. And that's it. And then she, she's her, she makes her second full real wish, uh-huh. which is, I wish I was back in my apartment right now. Without you. Without you. And then he calls her <laughs> from the phone <laughs> and says something like, I'm, I'm going after your tasty sister. And then <laughs> and she yells, fuck. You. <laughs> the way she gives this fuck you over the phone is stupendous. It's really fantastic. <laughs> And so this is where we go to the party, yeah. right? Yes, Tony Todd, the doorman. Yes. Candyman, Mr. Bloodworth himself. Tony Ta- Todd is the bouncer who is not playing Tony Todd. Oh, yeah. The name's Valentine. Johnny Valentine. Incredible. He he really does, like, this is a fully formed character uh-huh. for some reason. For him, he's already written a backstory to this guy. Uh-huh. Like, and Tony Todd rocking a mustache, which is a look. It's a good look. It's a good look. He really chews on that, uh, what the f- fuck does it have to do with you uh-huh because okay so 
the whole thing is the Jin wants to get into the party, uh-huh. and he's like, "Well, you're not on the list." Right. And he's like, "All right, well, doesn't your job suck? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you like to go on a vacation? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to escape?" Uh, and he's like, "Yeah, sure." And then this is not a wish either. Yeah. But he puts him in this Harry Houdini trap, like the the giant glass uh-huh. aquarium in a straight jacket. Right. And I'm like, that's not really granting his wish. No. And even so. His wish was to escape. Yeah. So, by, by, by all accounts, he should be able to escape this trap, right? Well, he does have that line where he's like, Harry uh, Houdini did it in two and a half minutes, mm-hmm. which also, like, how do you know? You've been in a rock for, you know, a thousand years. I know. But also, I I, <laughs> I, I wrote down that water looks dirty. Uh-huh. There's things floating in it. Uh-huh. Like, what are we doing? Get Tony Todd out of there. The, the way I interpret this is Tony Todd doesn't die here because his wish is to escape. Yeah. He'll be able to escape. I like, hope so. And there's no real danger. There's no real danger here. He, the, the scene cuts too early, but he gets out, right? Maybe he'll show back up in Wishmaster 5. Maybe, maybe he's got a twin brother that's under the stage. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this movie has not one, but two party scenes uh-huh. where shit goes absolutely insane. And oh my gosh. This is where the Jin meets Beaumont and he's like, oh, it's a great party. He goes, yeah, I wish it was a party for people to remember, just like the Persia thing. Yeah. And the Jin's like, oh, I've already done that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so... The special effects work here is great. Like it's He grants that wish and cuts to at first it seems like the other people in the party are making wishes that are coming true, right? Mm-hmm. Like it cuts to that lady toasting and saying a phrase we all say all the time. Ted, you could see right through me. Mm-hmm. And that's when she turns into glass and explodes. Uh-huh. It's worse in the second movie, though, because he goes to a casino and he's like, I'll get a ton of wishes here. And oh, like, sure. I wish I won the jackpot and stuff like that. But this one, yeah, the woman turns into January Jones and explodes. Mm-hmm. And we get, this is somehow a repeating trend in this season. Yeah. There's a more wire trauma. Oh, yeah. With the piano wire. Killing uh, Robert Kurtzman in a cameo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It wraps around him and decapitates him. Uh, there's a guy with snakes sticking out of his head. Uh-huh. There's a waiter stabbing himself with a knife and twisting the skin around into like this sort of Beetlejuice-esque uh, rubber mask. Uh-huh. There's some really great effects here. There is. And there's a guy that looks like, uh, what's his name? I think it's the acid on him in RoboCop. Like, yeah. It's- <laughs> sure. Yeah. And so Alex goes and finds the gin and he's in his real form. And she's like, what the fuck is going on? He's like, ah, he wished for a party that everyone would remember. And he goes, you don't approve? All right, then fuck it. (laughs) (laughs) Which is a line from this movie. Yeah. He truly says. You know what I say? If you can't beat him, burn Burn him, baby. baby. (laughs) This guy gets a real personality at the end of this movie. (laughs) But yeah, throughout this whole scene, like the Jen is doing stuff that hasn't been wished for. Like. When Alex tries to get to Shannon at the party, he causes a fire to erupt to, mm-hmm. like, trip her up. Mm-hmm. Uh, he makes statues attack her. A painting of Jack the Ripper comes to life yep. and stabs a dude in the throat. Yep. Poseidon or Neptune with the fucking trident. Oh, yeah. Throws it at somebody. Uh-huh. We get a we get a samurai statue attacking people. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it's fun. It, it's it's uh, Big Trouble in Little China at the end of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> sure is. Uh, we've got to mention, Alex kept having these dreams about her sister in the fire that we talked about like Uh she's at the back door she can't get it open and it's just like this wavy 2d shot of a girl screaming with flames behind her Uh and then the gin has a painting that's exactly that and he says well i've got your sister right here and it's like the sister's in the painting also there's more fire in the painting i was gonna say there's the painting is somehow on fire but like in the painting and he's like you gotta grant this uh, another wish or i'll kill your sister and i don't know like i don't know man (laughs) this feels like it it feels like you're breaking the rules here Uh but i also i I don't know the movie is not consistent with its own logic so who's to say yep luckily she remembers her own basketball advice Uh uh-huh so the the to re this is the end of the movie. So she says, "I wish that the guy from Day of the Dead wasn't drinking <laughs> that day on the job two, two days, days ago. ago." Yeah, and so therefore he won't drop the statue. The statue won't break open. The jewel won't come out, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and then Jen's like, <laughs> "What?" And then oh, gets fuck. you said the one right thing. Yeah, and then gets sucked into the jewel into a vortex. Yeah. yeah. I do love that little like mask level CGI shot of his skin peeling back from the skull mm-hmm. and then the skull flying into the the vortex. It's fun. Yep. And 
I guess, I mean, there's there's a couple of things we skipped over, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Finish recapping, because I, I have so many questions about oh, this. Oh, I do, too. I do, too. <laughs> so, he goes back into the du- jewel. She's got the jewel now. And then, I guess because her lab tech friend didn't die, she decided to give him a chance. Like, yeah. there's no reason. Because she's like, let's go on a date. We'll get a hot dog and go to a ball game, just like you want. How about we get a date? Uh, yeah, she's 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 pulling on him now. She's putting her sweaty hat on top of his head. <laughs> but it's like, why? Why did she decide? And then she pulls his hat out of his desk yep. and puts it on his head. Yep. But like, why? Why? Why the sudden change? There was no love story here, right? She's just like, I guess I will give that guy a chance. Okay, right. And then snap, you know, smash cut to the jewel, push in on the jewel, and then we see the the wishmaster is still in the jewel, the gin, and laughing, and laughing, and then cut to the weirdest Motorhead song <laughs> I've ever heard. It's a bizarre, re- quickly wrapped up ending. So yeah, it's very strange because it cuts back to two days before. Tommy, whatever his name is, the the, the dock worker yeah. is like not sweaty. His hair is done up, like he looks nice. He's sober. Yeah, he's sober, and he's like he he doesn't drop the thing. Ted Raimi doesn't die. Oh, it's, well, it's funny because Ted Raimi's like, hey, keep doing exactly what you're doing. <laughs> like you're not you're not fucking up, right? Yeah, he still he still loses it, and then he goes, "You got it, Mister." Yep. But like, so does she remember the the events of the movie? I I guess right. She has to right because. She decides to give that guy a chance. Nothing changed for her. Right. Like, because she didn't know anything about the doc thing until she started investigating it. So nothing changed. So weird. Yeah. So she has to have all those memories. And don't worry, listener, if you're worried about the lore and the, the sequels of this movie, it never comes back into question. No. She's never there. Nope. So, yeah. I, I, the sister, do we even see the sister at the end? No. Yeah, she's still in the painting, right? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I hope so. Boy, what a what a movie. And like I said, uh, well, there's a bunch of stuff we skipped over. Like, we skipped over her going back to the docks and the guy sexually harassing her. Oh, sure. <laughs> and, and that scene is wild because it's so, like, there's so much space between each line, mm-hmm. right? Like, they're, they're just, like, one of them says a line, they hold for, like, five seconds, and another one says a line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so ridiculous. And, and he finds out that he's, the, the the jewel that the guy, the dock worker found that sold to the pawn, pawn shop guy. Uh-huh. Oh, it sold it for like a hundred bucks. And he's like, did I get ripped off? And she's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Big time. Big time. There's a, uh, also like, also when, when you're talking about how the sequel picks things up from this one, can I read a quote from the, di- the writer director of Wishmaster 2? Oh, of course. That I found? Of course. That's one I have very mixed feelings about because there are parts of it that I really like, but I think all in all, it's a little dumb. To tell you the truth, I haven't seen it since I uh, made it. When I was making it, I thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I I really... I, I'll say this. If you haven't seen this movie, mm-hmm. I would recommend it mm-hmm. because it is a lot of fun. It's not a good movie. No. But if you watch it and you're like, that was fine. Yeah. Was, I had a lot of fun watching that. Yeah. Watch the second one yeah. because the second one has a death that I do not want to spoil. But Fully bonkers. It's the, it's the funniest slash craziest slash... I can't believe they actually did it kind of death. Because yeah. it's a death you could probably picture in your mind. <laughs> like, it's something you've probably said to someone at some point in your life. Uh-huh. And they do it. And it's really funny. So, if we ever... That sequel is directed by Jack Shoulder, who made Nightmare on Elm Street 2, mm-hmm. uh, The Hidden and Alone in the Dark. So, he's got some horror pedigree. There's some fun stuff in it, for sure. It's There's some, there's definitely some fun stuff in that movie. And I would recommend watching this one, totally. Yeah. If you, I, I would say, maybe don't drop, you know, $25 on the Blu-ray like I did. No, but, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if it's streaming, it's a fun time. Uh-huh. It's a good good use of an evening. Yeah, uh, I think the vi- the vfx are awesome yes uh i think andrew divoff is a true gem nailed it hey oh and i i think the kills are great like yes. this is this would make a great group watch so if you haven't seen it get some friends together like nathan said it's barely a movie in terms of runtime <laughs> sure yeah so even with Tubi edge you could probably be in and out in like an hour and a half a hundred minutes yeah yeah Cool. Is there any other part of your notes that we missed or we skipped over? Anything? No, I'm I'm so excited to talk about prop cop. All right. Well, let us wait around no longer. Let's get into it. What do you got for prop cop? There, uh, when he gets to the school of medicine, that guy who gets his eyes stolen has a little jump scare where someone runs out in front of him with a jar full of eyeballs. That's right. Yeah. 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 So I want uh, to go with my jar of uh, of pipes from last week. I want a jar full of eyeballs. All right. All right. 
Uh, I want Neptune's goddamn trident that he throws. <laughs> yeah. I, it's it's a statue that comes alive and just throws a trident at Alex and misses, and it's really good. And it's filmed at a canted angle to mm-hmm. the point where it looks like when Steve Carell has the trident in Anchorman. It sure fucking does. It sure does. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what about bit part, which is, of course, where we cast ourselves as one of the extras in the movie? Uh-huh. Uh, there's a couple of good choices here. Yes. I would say I want to be the guy whose skeleton comes out of his fucking body in ancient Persia. <laughs> that was that was one of my choices. It's so good. <laughs> what do you got? When the security guards show up during the party at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. there's one of them who gets knocked down and goes, no, yep. don't, and yep. then gets stabbed in the dick. Yep. I, I remember that. Yep. Absolutely. It's a good scene. Absolutely. <laughs> it's memorable. Absolutely. All right. Well, I wish, Nathan, uh-huh. that you would give me the silver lining to Wishmaster. Yeah. Um. So, Ed Finney lived to yell at <laughs> dock workers another day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He sure did. And mine is uh, Alex saved her sister from not one, but two fires now. There you go. So Three more and she's got the hat trick. <laughs> Do you think that the third one, she grants some other kind of wish master's wishes? Oh, like, yeah. you stop three fires. Uh, You've done it. You have to become a firefighter now. <laughs> yeah, that, that one was easy one. I mean, yeah. like, everything's kind of wrapped up neatly at the end. Uh-huh. I mean, obviously, the, the gin's still out there, but... Don't worry, she'll never have to deal with this shit again. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> sure. Well, let's say this, though. Let's say if you're you're kind of scared, you know, the Wishmaster's still out there. You Who knows what he could be doing? Let's say you finish up this movie and you need another movie as a double feature, a pick-me-up. What's a movie people should double feature with Wishmaster? I would recommend, it's a truly terrible movie, mm-hmm. uh, 2000's Faust, Love of the Damned. Oh, I don't even know what this is. It's a it's an adaptation of an indie comic that is like basically, what if we combined Spawn and Batman and Wolverine and then also just made it ridiculous? Okay. But the main villain is the devil played by Andrew Divoff. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yes. I see it. I can see it. Yeah, directed by Brian Usna, who's like worked on a ton of stuff like Society, okay. Bride of Reanimator, some of the Return of the Living Dead movies. Gotcha. Uh, ton of, ton of uh, goopy effects in that one, but uh, ridiculous. Copy that. Okay. All right. Well, my actual pick-me-up is not this, but I would say just watch all these Wishmaster movies. They all have something fun about them. Definitely don't marathon them like I did because you <laughs> probably want to kill yourself. Uh huh. But they are fun. And the fourth movie is basically a romantic comedy. So if that p- piques your interest at all. It's so <laughs> baffling. I cannot, like, I could not, be- I was live texting you while I watched that one. Uh-huh. I could not believe what I was seeing. It's truly, three and four, truly seeing is believing. Like, <laughs> I, could, I, ca- I yeah. cannot express to you how ridiculous they get. Uh huh. But there are a lot of fun uh but my actual pick me up is another movie where wishing deals with some uh leads to some shenanigans mm-hmm. i'm gonna go with liar liar oh yeah, yeah that was a fave of mine as a kid mm-hmm. so uh yeah check out liar liar afterwards and like i said you'll still get some more magic in there and some where some wishing causes some comedy so uh-huh. yeah liar liar all right yeah well how about this <laughs> um yes best kill we like to talk about best kills when we do horror movies oh sure yeah do you have a best kill for wishmaster oh for me it's definitely the guy with the skeleton that like pops out of his body yeah yeah that's a good one i'm, I'm presuming he died after that <laughs> I had to go with the airplane fucking exploding. I guess. <laughs> it's the oh, fu- yeah, of course. It's the funniest fucking thing, listen. I, just, <laughs> even if you don't watch the movie, just look up Wishmaster airplane scene. I'm sure it's on YouTube. Like, I wish I wish that that was the tone of the movie Me throughout. Too. Like, that, Me too. Like, it is so clever and silly and so, like, fucked up dark comedy that I just, I wish the rest of the movie was on that level. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'll say this too, since we're talking horror movies, uh-huh. I've recently seen one this is kind of unrelated but we're talking about low budget horror movies like this one oh yeah uh-huh. i gotta really put it out there I, if you haven't listened already it's getting a limited theatrical run check out uh skin of Marink if you have the opportunity to low budget movie I keep hearing it's so good uh, yeah i'm sure you've heard about it. it's been a, a viral sensation uh it's it's not everyone's cup of tea i'll go and tell you that you may find yourself really annoyed with it or think it's stupid but uh-huh. it's one of the best things i've ever seen like it's truly like it's a low budget movie it's very low key like it's you might like i'll be honest the first time i watched it for like the first 30 minutes i was tapping my foot Uh i was uh, very annoyed but 
it's one of those movies, and I, I don't want to say this is like a pretentious thing, but you really do have to turn your phone off and just watch it. Yeah. Just focus on it. Get sucked into it. It's it's an innovative as fuck. So I, I just really want to put that out there. Please go watch Skid America. And I, I, they're not paying me to say this. Sure. I have no affiliation with it at all. But if you like good horror, and 2022 is a great year for horror, uh-huh. I def- definitely recommend checking that out to kick start off your 2023 if you're looking for good horror movies. So yeah, that's it. Uh, and Wishmaster, I'd say watch that shit too because yes. it's fucking funny as fuck. I'm glad we finally got to talk about it. I've been waiting months to talk about this movie. <laughs> Me too. I felt I was so happy to finally watch this and, mm-hmm. and really dig into it. All right. And then maybe we'll cover two, three, and four at some point in the show. Yeah. Like, <laughs> way down the road. I need I need a good buffer between these movies. Yeah. Well, listen, if you've got some some feedback you want to give us about Wishmaster or about the show in general, you can do so at the Silver Linings Playlist at gmail.com, or you can DM us over on Instagram or Twitter. You can also follow us on those two platforms and check us out on TikTok for some selects, some highlights, some behind-the-scenes stuff occasionally. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, leave feedback, all the good podcast roundup stuff, and check out our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist. <laughs> Playlist. Now, next week, my two back-to-back picks are done. Uh-huh. We're now turning the, the reins over to you, Nathan. So you're picking our episode for next week. That's right. A movie I have not seen, but that I am excited to talk about. So mm-hmm. why don't you give us a clue for what we're talking about next week? Uh, next week's movie, I think everyone should see themselves doing it, and their friends should see it, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I have no context for it, so I'm excited to find out. <laughs> and uh, I think we'll have a guest on that one, a returning guest, maybe? Yes, that's right. All right. Yes. Well, and hopefully Mallory will be back, too, by then. Uh, I hope the Wishmaster lets him out of the jewel to join <laughs> us on that one. <laughs> sure. I guess we'll have to wish for it. So, listener, I need you, kind of like uh, when Goku needs the, the spirit bomb, I need you all to wish really hard that Mally will be <laughs> back next week. <laughs> Uh, anything else we want to talk about before we get out of here for the week? Uh, no, all my all my wishes came true this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, rest in peace, Oatbell and Nick's mom. Nick's mom. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, as always, Excelsior. Nib sugarith bahim. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show? We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!